In this video, we're going to focus on calculating the normal force of an object. So let's say if you have a horizontal surface and there's a box on a surface. Now let's say it's a five kilogram box. What is the normal force that is acting on the box? If you have a flat object on a surface, the normal force is simply the weight of the object. Let's calculate the weight force. The weight is mg. So we have a mass of 5 times a gravitational acceleration on Earth of 9.8. And 5 times 9.8, that's 49 newtons. So that's the weight force. So the block exerts 49 newtons on the surface. Now, the surface also exerts a force of 49 newtons. That force, which is perpendicular to the surface, is known as the normal force. In this example, it's an upward force. It's opposite to the weight force. Now, is there anything that we could do to either increase or decrease the normal force? How can we do so without changing the mass of the object? The first thing you could do is you can press down on the object with another force. So let's say if we apply a force of 30 newtons. So imagine taking your hand and pushing it down against the block. What force will the surface exert on the block? What is the normal force now? Is it higher or is it lower than 49? If you exert a downward force on the block, the surface now has to exert a greater normal force. Not only must it support the weight of the block, but it must provide enough force to counteract that downward force that you're applying. So therefore, anytime you apply a downward force on, this, on an object, you increase the normal force. The normal force is going to be 79 newtons instead of 49. So that's how you can increase the normal force, is by squeezing the block against the surface. Now, how can we decrease the normal force? What do you think we can do? One way to do that is to attach a rope to the block. Once you attach a rope to it, what you need to do is you need to pull up the block. You don't have to lift it off the surface, but if you apply an upward force acting through the rope, Let's say if we apply an upward force of 20 newtons. This block will feel lighter against the surface of whatever the block is on, the horizontal surface. So now, the surface doesn't have to support the entire weight of the block. It only needs to support 29 newtons. Because you're supporting 20 newtons out of the 45, out of the 49 newtons of the block. So when you lift up the the block, if you apply an upward force, the surface, there's less pressure for the surface to support the weight of the block. So th that decreases the normal force if you lift it up. The total upward force, 20 plus 29, must add to the total downward force in order for the forces to be balanced and for the 5 kilogram object to remain in equilibrium because it's currently at rest. And so anytime you try to lift up an object with a rope, the normal force will decrease. If you press it down against the surface, the normal force will increase. Now, I'm assuming that because you're watching this video, you're probably taking physics in high school or in college. And it's important that you know how to set up a free body diagram. And you know how to mathematically set up an equation to calculate different types of forces. But first, I wanted you to understand the concept of normal force and when it's going to increase and when it will decrease before I show you like a mathematical way of getting the answer, which is what we're going to do now. So let's say if we have a 10 kilogram object and we wish to calculate the normal force. How can we set up an equation that will help us to calculate the normal force if we just have this block at rest on this horizontal surface. 
the first thing you want to do is identify all these um, forces in the y direction. We have a downward weight force, and there's an upward normal force. That's it. That's all the forces that we have in this example. So now, we want to set up an expression that will give us the net force of the object in the y direction. There's no forces in the x direction, so we don't have to worry about it. Now, the normal force is in the positive y direction. So we're going to say it's positive Fn. The weight force is in the negative y direction, so we're going to say it's negative W. Our goal for doing this is to set up a process that's going to help us to calculate the normal force of this object. And understanding this process will help you to solve harder problems later throughout your physics course. So we need to know what to do with this. And you have to ask yourself, what is the object doing? Is it at rest? Is it moving with constant velocity? Or is it accelerating? If the object is at rest, or if it's moving with constant speed, the net force is zero. Now, if it's accelerating, you need to replace this with ma. Newton's second law, net force is equal to mass times acceleration. But we know the block is sitting on the table or on the, the floor at rest. It's not accelerating upward or downward. It's simply at rest. So anytime it's at rest, and if it's remaining that way, replace the net force with zero. So now, if we add w to both sides, now we have an expression for the normal force. In this example, the normal force is simply equal to the weight, and the weight is mg. So if you have a flat object at rest on a horizontal surface, the normal force is equal to the weight force, as we've seen in an early example. So it's going to be 10 times 9.8, which is 98 newtons. Here's the next example. So let's say if we have a 15 kilogram mass resting on a horizontal surface, and this time we're going to apply a downward force of, let's say, 100 newtons. Derive an expression for the normal force, and then calculate the normal force with that expression. So let's create a free body diagram. Let's identify all the forces that is acting on this block in the y direction. So we have the downward weight force, and there's an upward normal force. Now, let's write an expression with the sum of all forces in the y direction. So the normal force is going in a positive y direction. The arrow is pointing up. So I'm just going to put positive Fn. Now, the weight force is in a negative y direction, so I'm going to put negative w. You don't have to put the positive if you don't want to, but in this case, it's not necessary. Now, this force is also in the negative y direction, so I'm going to put minus f. And because the block is at rest, it's not accelerating, fy is equal to 0. So we have this expression. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add W and F to both sides. So now all we have is the normal force on the right side. So the normal force, as we can see, is the sum of the weight force and the applied downward force. So it's going to be Mg plus F. So it's a mass of 15 times a gravitational acceleration of 9.8 plus the downward force of 100. So now let me get my calculator. And it's going to be 15 times 9.8, which is 147 plus 100. So in this example, the normal force is 247 newtons. So now let's look at our third example. So let's say if we have a 20 kilogram mass. And this time, we're going to apply an upward force. We're going to pull the object up with a rope. And whenever you have a force that is acting through a rope, that force is known as the tension force. So I'm going to put T to represent the tension force. And let's say the tension force is 100 newtons in a positive y direction. 
So then now we got to create the free body diagram. We have a downward weight force and an upward normal force. So with this information, feel free to pause the video and write an expression that will help you to calculate the normal force using T and W. So let's write an expression with the sum of all forces in the y direction. By the way, whenever you're lifting the object up, sometimes there may not be a normal force. If you get a negative answer, then what's going to happen is that the tension force exceeds the weight force. If the tension force exceeds the weight force, the object is going to lift off the ground. And if it's no longer in contact with the ground, there is no normal force. But let's finish this problem. So we have an upward normal force. We have an upward tension force. So this time it's going to be positive T or plus T. And we have a downward weight force. Now we know this is 0. So I'm going to add W to both sides. And I'm going to subtract both sides by T. So the normal force is now equal to W minus T. So it's the difference between the weight force and the tension force. Now the weight force in this example is mg, as it always is. And that's going to be 20 times 9.8, which is 196. And the tension is 100. Now I want you to understand something. The tension in this example is less than the weight force, which means there's going to be a normal force, in this case of 96. But now let's say if the tension force, for example, was 300 newtons. If you use this formula, the normal force is going to be 196 minus 300, and you're going to get a negative answer, negative 104. So what this means, if you see this, it means that the block is no longer in contact with the ground. It's actually being lifted up because the tension exceeds the weight force, so there is no normal force. So if you get a negative answer for the normal force, that means that there's none. It's no longer in contact with the ground. So make sure you understand that. But for this example, it's 96 newtons. Now here's another interesting question. So let's say if we have a 30 kilogram block. And this time, we're going to pull on the block with a rope at an angle. Instead of lifting it up directly, we're going to take a rope and pull it towards the right at an angle. And let's say the tension force is, let's say, 300 newtons. And the angle of this force is 30 degrees above the horizontal line. So with this information, go ahead and calculate the normal force that the ground exerts on the block. Feel free to pause the video. So let's create a free body diagram. We've got a downward weight force, the upward normal force, and the tension force at an angle. Now, you need to realize that because this force is at an angle, it has an x component and it has a y component. So we have tx and ty. Now, the x component will give the block an acceleration towards the right if it exceeds the frictional force. But we're not concerned with tx, though, because our goal is to calculate fn, the normal force, and it's in the y direction. So we don't need Tx. And a force in the x direction is independent with a force in the y direction. At this instant, we need to focus on Ty, because Ty is the upward force in the y direction that will decrease the normal force. So let's create an expression that will give us the sum of all forces in the y direction. So it's going to be the upward normal force plus the upward ty uh, tension force that's in the positive y direction and the weight force is in the negative y direction so it's going to be minus w so now let's replace this with zero we're going to assume the object is at rest if it's not the normal force will be negative so that means it's probably accelerating upward too Now let's add W to both sides, and let's subtract both sides by TY. So we have negative TY 
plus w is equal to fn. So we can rewrite that and say that the normal force is going to be the weight force minus the y component of the tension force. Now, what is the y component of the tension force? It's important to know that Tx is simply T cosine theta, and Ty is T sine theta. So Fn is equal to the weight force, which is mg, minus Ty, where Ty is T sine theta. So m is 30, g is 9.8, t is 300, and then times sine of 30. 30 times 9.8, that's 294 newtons. Sine 30 is 1 half. Make sure it's in degree mode, by the way. And 1 half of 300 is 150. So 294 minus 150 is 144. Because we have a positive value for the normal force, that means that the block remains in contact with the surface. If we get a negative answer, that means that the tension force is strong enough to literally lift the block off the surface, which means that there is no normal force. But this is the answer for this example. Now, there is some other useful information that I want to give you before we end this video. Now, we said that if we have a block that rests on a horizontal surface, let's say that this block has a mass m. And if there's no upward tension force that we're using to lift the block, or if we're not applying a downward force to increase the normal force, the normal force of this block is simply equal to the weight. That is, it's equal to mg if it rests on a horizontal surface. But now what if we have a block that rests on an incline? So let's say this is the mass m. What happens to the normal force now? Does it change? In the first example, the normal force is completely in the y direction. Now it's at an angle. And that angle is based on the angle of the incline. So it changes. It turns out that the normal force is mg cosine theta. Now, this equation applies if there's no rope that's lifting the object up or if we're not pressing down on the object. So if it's simply resting on that surface, and there's no other forces that is in the same direction as the normal force, then in that case, the normal force is simply mg cosine theta. It's based on the angle. Now, for a horizontal surface, the angle is 0. And so the normal force is 100% of the weight value, because cosine of 0 is 1. Now, let's say if the angle was 60 degrees the normal force will be 50% of the weight value because cosine 60 is 1 half.